Hi, welcome back to the Spring Boot tutorial. In this video, we are going to test our REST API using the JUnit test cases. So let's begin. I have already created a Spring Boot REST API. In case if you don't know how to create the REST API using the Spring Boot, I'll drop a link in the description section of this video. Make sure to check out that video. So it's a simple project. If I expand this inside the source main Java, we have uh, two packages, entity and repo. We have this product entity, which is having a four fields, ID, name, price, and description. And this product repository, which extends the JPA repository. And now let's write a JUnit test cases to test this REST API. And if I look at the application.properties, we have this data source URL, username, password. We have connected to the MySQL database and the database name is Spring Data JPA. And we also have some JPA properties, which is a show SQL. We are going to set this to true and the Hibernate DDL minus auto. We're going to set this to update. So which will automatically create the database tables for us and this format SQL, which will format the SQL queries. So that's all about this application or properties. And now inside this source test Java, we are going to write JUnit test cases. We are going to annotate this with at Spring Boot test annotation. And for each test cases, we are going to annotate the at test annotation. So first let's write a JUnit test case for creating the data or creating the product public void test create. Let's annotate this with add test annotation. So I'm going to get rid of this context to loads method. We don't need that. And we have to auto wire the product repository. So product repo, I'm going to call this P repo it's short for product repo and let's auto wire this. So inside the test create method, let's create the new product. P dot set ID. P dot set name. Let's set this to Sony headphone. P dot set description. So the description is good. P dot set price. So which is $200, pretty expensive. And let's save this to the database. P repo dot save and let's pass the product okay so now we have stayed saved into the database and we are going to use the assert not null to write the test case assert not null and we're going to call the p repo dot find by id we're going to pass the id which is one and then we're going to call the get method so when we call this so after saving the product to the database and we're going to get the product using the product id and then we're going to check the assert not null so this becomes true and the test case should run so let's save this and now if you want to run the single like if you want to run the particular test case then you can select this and you can run this but for now anyhow we are having this class contains only one test case we can directly run this like this run as junit test
you can see the SQL statement and the unit test case has been successful. If you go to the JUnit tab and you can see it runs one on one, one test case and there is no errors, there is no failures, all green. And if you expand this, you can see the test create method, which is passed successfully. And if I go to the MySQL database and let me refresh this, if I expand this product, we should get the product which is Sony headphone, which is absolutely stored in the database and our test case has been successfully passed. Okay, so that is for testing the create operation or the save operation. So now let's write a test case for the read operation. Okay, there are two kinds of read operations. One is to read all the records and the second one is for reading a single record so let's test both the both the operations let's go to the sts and what i'll do is i'm going to create a method public void test read all Let me annotate it with a add test annotation. And let's use p repo and call the find all method. So this will return list of product. I'm going to call this list. So inside our database, we know that we have only one record and we can use the assert that method using the assert j library assert that let's pass the list dot size and we're going to call is greater than method so the greater than is it is greater than zero then it will return true Let's save this and I want to test only the second test, which is test read all operation, read all method. So just select this test case and right click run as JUnit test. Test has been successful. If you go to the JUnit tab and if you expand this, you can see test read all, all green. There is no errors and there is no failures. So this is for reading all the records from the database. So testing this way, you can test the list of records from the database. So now let's look at for testing a single record. Public void test single product let's use the p repo p repo dot find by id we're going to pass the id right now we have only one record in the database and the ID of that record is one. So let's pass the ID. This will return product. Let's call the get method. So this will give us the product. And now we can use assert equals method assert equals and we can check the name or we can check the id or we can check the price anything so let's check the price so right now the price is 200 200 product dot get price and let's save this 
and select the test which we want to run right click run as JUnit test all right let's go to the JUnit tab and the test is successful runs one on one there is no errors there is no failures all right so now we have tested for create read all and reading a single product so now let's test for update and delete public void test update let me annotate with add test annotation so first of all let me minimize this and I'm going to create a white space okay so now let's make use of the p repo p repo dot find by id we're going to pass the id which is 1l and we're going to call the get method and then this will return the product Let's change the price to hundred dollars. P dot set price hundred dollars, and then we're going to use the P repo to save the product. To test this, we're going to use assert not equals. And let's add the price 200 we know that we have changed it to hundred dollars but we are checking it for 200 because we are using the assert not equals method and then p repo dot find by id dot get dot get price so let's save this and select the test which we want to run right click run as junit All right, the test is successful. If I go to the JUnit, you can see that test update, which is run successfully. There is no errors, all green. All right, now let's test for the last operation, which is a delete operation. Public void test delete. Let's annotate this with add test annotation. Let's use p repo dot delete by ID. Let's pass the ID which is one. We will make use of the assert that and then we pass the p repo dot exists by ID. We are going to pass the ID and then we are going to check is we are going to call the is false method. We know that once we deleted the record from their database, there will be no uh, specific uh, record. There will be no record in the database and we are going to call the exist by ID to check the existence of the record and then we are going to call the is false method. So let's save this select the test which we want to run run as junit test all right all green go to the junit tab and you can see run one on one all green there is no errors there is no failures Okay, so now we have write, written a test cases for all the database operations like create, read, update, and delete. So now it's time to test all these test cases together. So in order to do that, we have to 
specify the order in which order the J unit has to run. So if you don't specify the order, it will um, run in a random way so that uh, the test cases will get fail. Okay. So let me prove that. So what I'll do is I'm going to right click and click on this run as first of all, let's go to the database. Let's delete this. Let me drop this table as well. Okay, so now let's go to the STS, right click, run as JUnit test. You can see the test cases has been failed. It has been failed for the single get single product and the update. Okay, this is the problem. So if you don't specify the order, then it will run in some random order and we will get the test cases are failed. So in order to specify the order, we have to annotate this class with a test method order annotation. So let's do that at test method order order annotation dot class let me import the test method order and for each test cases we're going to specify the order in which order it has to execute so at order i'm going to specify one because this the test create has to run first so let me import this order as well let's take a copy of this paste it and let's change this to two change this to three change this to four and change this to five so let's save this. So now let me go to the database. Let me drop this table and now let's run all the test cases together. You can see now go to the JUnit test and you can see all green. We have run five JUnit test cases and all are passed. There is no errors. There is no failures. If you expand this, you can see the test create, test read all, test single product, update, delete, all are run successfully and there is no errors. So this way you can test our REST API using the JUnit library. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video in case if you are looking for the source code it's available on my github and also it is available on my website thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video